In the early 1900s, electric vehicles accounted for nearly 30% of all vehicles on the road. We are now bridging the century-long reign of the internal combustion engine. It's exciting for me to see the popular EVs of the distant past alongside the EVs of today and tomorrow. But how do others perceive this transformation in automotive? I'm here at the Amelia Island Concours de Elegance in Florida, and at this show you can expect to see a lot of classic cars and actually some new automakers. But what I really want to dive into is the unexpected section of the classic electric vehicles. Let's go and talk to some people to learn more about these special cars. It's a 1922 Detroit Electric. Um, it is uh, towards the end of the first electric era. Uh, by 1922, gasoline cars had electric starters. Electrics were losing their market. So it's highly refined mechanically, stylistically. Well, if you look behind you, it's a 1912. They haven't changed much. It'll do about 25 miles an hour. Depending on terrain, 75 to 100 miles on a charge. I've had it doing 40 miles an hour, and it's frightening. <laughs> Won't do that again. The man who donated it to us bought it from the museum. Incredible. He gave it to us shortly before he passed away because we promised we would drive it, we wouldn't stick it in the museum and let it gather dust. And we do. We've, we've taken it out for pizza. We drive people <laughs> around the neighborhood in it. Um, last Halloween, it was dressed up with ghouls and goblins and witches. So we, That's we great. use it. As, <laughs> That's as incredible. Yeah. Do you know what kind of batteries are in there? Yes, it's got 14 um, deep cycle golf cart batteries. So it's an 84 volt car. You have this electric vehicle here, but what are your thoughts about the resurgence of electric vehicles in the market today? I think if we'd stuck with electric cars, we'd be driving around now with a one square foot solar panel on the roof and never have to recharge. I think it's great. They're fast, they're safe, a um, little bit expensive, but they're coming down. And uh, unfortunately, I think gasoline cars are a thing of the past. I hope they'll keep letting us drive the old ones. And you'll keep driving this one too. We'll keep driving <laughs> this one, absolutely. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about this beautiful vehicle you have here? Yes, it's a 1905 Columbia open drive world. And it's a really special electric car. It's obviously very early. But what's unique about it, if you look at most of the electric cars at the time, they were really small. And a lot of the electric cars early on were designed for women because they didn't have to crank them and they had a, a small range. This car was very rare, very unique. It's got two huge electric motors that power ring gears on the back, and obviously it's chauffeur driven, and the passengers will sit inside. But the other thing that's really unusual about this car is with the exception of the one paint job, it's absolutely original. The interior, wow. all the leather, is absolutely original and untouched. And it's just, it's a spectacular automobile. Can you talk to me about what your perspective is with this new wave of electric cars coming back? Really, because electric cars were so popular back in the day and now they're, they're really making a comeback. Well, the interesting thing about that is that the technology of electric cars really hasn't changed. I and mean, it's the same, they, they run the same, they work the same, the concept the same. Over 100 years later, we're still doing the same thing. We're just doing it better. So the reason that electric cars now work and are relevant is simply because of the range. Uh, but this car in a Tesla, there's not a lot of difference except for the technology behind what makes it operate. So obviously they're relevant, they're coming on strong, and they're the future. No, they're not the future, they're today. And look at this spread of electric vehicles we have. We have the Mini Cooper S Electric. We have the Super Performance Custom Coach Built Electric Classic Car. We have the Mustang Mach-E. Next up is the Porsche Taycan, the VW ID4, the Hummer EV, both in the pickup truck and the SUV. We have the Lucid Air Grand Touring and Finally, the Bollinger SUV. And I have with me who? Uh, Brent, Brent Blaze, uh, from the Villages for you. Can you tell me what you're thinking of all these electric vehicles that you're seeing here? I'm a Model 3 owner, so I'm familiar with some of 
the electric car industry looks like currently, and the truck guys have kind of lagged in getting on the whole uh, Tesla electric bandwagon. So uh, it's exciting to see the history of what the electric world had that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, to me, as a truck guy at heart, uh, it's kind of quintessentially where we need to get to kind of get total uh, acceptance of electric car culture. So um, I love hunting, fishing, and uh, to me this is like the perfect ranch buggy. All the benefit of being quiet in the nature and natural environment. Um, opportunity to uh, kind of be stealth at the same time too. Uh, enjoy the outdoors. So I think it's a, a win-win. All right, we have some more Concord attendees. And who do I have with me here? I'm Vivian Eberly. And I'm Nolan Mackey. Uh, we're both from Birmingham, Alabama. Right behind us, we have the Bollinger pickup truck. Electrification is starting to make some moves in the industry. Tell me what your thoughts are about that. I think it's very promising. Um, I really like the idea of it, and um, kind of it gets easier to find parking stations honestly. That's the one thing that you're concerned about? Yep. Yeah, I think, I think what she said is it's very important to uh, electric cars be more uh, commonplace. Um, I like where this is heading. This looks really cool, very utilitarian, touches back to um, original like Humvee and military style vehicles, which I think taps into that market of people who don't want the, the soft feeling of an electric car. They want something that's a little bit more tough, a little bit more rugged. So I think this checks both those boxes really well. Now there's two things I love, electric cars and coffee. Thanks, Ford. What is your guys' name and where are you from? I'm Bob. And I'm Jim. And where are you from? We're from Chinesville. There are a lot of electric vehicles at this show and a lot of classic cars. What have you seen so far that you're really interested in? There's only one. Oh, yeah? Only one. Lucidair. We, in fact, we uh, are on the list for the Living Edition Dream. Oh, wow. What drew you to the Lucid Air Dream Edition? Because it's a limited number of those. It's a very special vehicle. We keyed in on the battery. The battery is the only one out there that beats Tesla. Everybody else gets over 500 miles to the charge. Have you owned any electric cars? Yes, I own one now. And it only it gets a little over 200 miles to the charge. And that's just not acceptable anymore. You spend too much time on the road. So that's when we saw the 500. We were all over it. And especially the the luxurious uh, mess of this car. When do you think you'll be taking delivery on your Lucid Air Dream Edition? Well, from what I understand, almost every automaker has a shortage of the semiconductor chips, and they're telling us sometime in the last half of this year, which could mean June 1st or December 31st. But we would prefer that they not rush it, and we'd rather them just have it delivered right as to rush it and maybe something not be quite perfect. And I'm here with Zach, who is the Senior Director of Retail Operations. He's going to take me through the Lucid Air and do a quick walk around. So there are a lot of classic EVs back from the 1900s over there. Sure. And obviously, you're a brand new EV company. Can you talk a little bit about the resurgence of electric vehicles and yeah. really where the market stands right now and why you think you guys are in a good position to really succeed? Sure. So the attributes of the electric vehicle that were true back in the early 1900s, ease of use, hardly ever break down, you just plug it in overnight, you get in the car, you drive, you charge it, it's still true of these cars. The benefit that we have now is range. The Lucid Air goes over 500 miles on a single charge. That's what makes it now, again, the car to have in, in, uh, in this time. So the design of the vehicle, the style, it, uh, it's really a new category, a new class, and so it's, it can be a little confusing and misleading when you first see it because it is, it's long, it's low, and so it looks like a very big car. But in fact, it's, it's about the size, it's a mid-size sedan. It's about the size of an E-Class Mercedes. But what we've done is through the technology that you mentioned, through the min miniaturization of the motors, and through intelligent position, positioning of the powertrain, we've been able to create a, a large luxury interior of the car in that mid-size footprint. And what that allows is a more efficient vehicle, a more dynamic and sporting vehicle uh, on the outside and in the way you drive it, 
But then it's also a comfortable, open, lux luxury car on the inside. So you guys have a lot of screens in this vehicle, don't you? Sure, there's uh, what we call the glass cockpit, is that main screen that you see in front of you, and it's a 34 inch 5K screen, and it's actually three screens. The one in the middle gives you uh, the, dr the driving information, speed, efficiency, that type of thing. On either side of that are touch screens. On the left side, it's the vehicle controls, windshield wipers, lighting, and on the right side is the home screen, and it tells you a lot of the information that you want to see about your phone, the radio stations. Uh, when you do a voice activation, it gives you feedback. And then the lower screen gives you deeper engagement if you need to adjust the settings or if you want to dig into your music settings in, in more depth. If you were to pick three things that you absolutely love about the Lucid Air, sure. what would those be? Sure, sure. It's hard to pick three, but for me, the headlights, there's so much that's gone into the headlight design and technology. That's a proprietary headlight design, and what it is what it is, it's a multi-lens array, and it's hundreds of little tiny lenses that allow the light to be distributed on the road more effectively. It enables the styling of the car, it also makes for better packaging, but it creates a safer experience and it just looks super cool. I love the glass canopy roof and it's something that people haven't really experienced yet because we haven't had cars out on the road for people to test drive. It's so open. We talk about the light and the way it plays against, against objects. So I just really love that glass canopy roof. And it's then, almost like you're sitting outside while you're inside the car. It is, and it, and, and it doesn't matter if you're out in a forest or you're driving through a city. Even you know the buildings, seeing them go by, seeing the trees, it's just it's a really unique experience. And then something that is talked about a lot, but I still just have to emphasize it, the way this car accelerates, just how smooth and how effortless and how just insane, it's, uh, it's something special. And again, it's something that people haven't been able to experience yet. And so but it soon, is still right? very unique, very soon, very okay, soon, good. yeah. <laughs> when do you think you guys will start doing test drives? Yeah, we'll, we'll do test drives later this year. You know, just like uh, production of the vehicle, it'll be in the second half of 2021. So expect test drives to be coming soon. The electric renaissance is just beginning. Although modern EVs have evolved into technological marvels, the foundation remains the same. Everyone we've talked to has exuded positivity and promise when it comes to electric vehicles. It's clear I'm not the only one who is eager to drive, fly, ride. Go electric. Well, what a great show it's been. We've seen the past and the future of electric vehicles and even talked to some enthusiasts. Make sure to like and subscribe to Misco Electric because we have more coming for you.